The Diary of Thoughts, Part 17. About Writing, Art and Artists. Written by Carlos Pacheco. It's not because I'm getting old but I honestly think there is a fundamental difference between reading a book, using our imagination to absorb its content, and looking at a computer screen and being influenced by the images that translate a restricted imagination of its author. The beauty of writing and reading lay in the interconnection between the author and his readers at an imaginary level. A book can be the object of multiple individual interpretations, various sceneries, environments, all this maintaining the underlying message that translates the spirit of its writer. Sometimes, writers are also expressing entirely different thoughts that other people cannot understand nor have the necessary imagination to interpret. This misunderstanding is one of the reasons why some writers get frustrated as they don't get the content of their imagination to be captured by others. This fundamental goal of each writer can be the object of success or frustration, depending on the reception of his or her ideas, concepts, principles, values, even philosophies. We can say that a writer is like a musician or a painter, as their different forms of expression of art are manifested by the same expectations about the eventual reactions caused by an individual interpretation of their words, sounds or images. The primary goal of writing, playing or painting is to send a message to other people and share the content of a part of the soul of the writer, musician or painter themselves as authors, as human beings expressing their feelings, their state of mind. Some genius writers just don't know how to express themselves, others use the unnecessarily sophisticated vocabulary as they think that they'll be accepted as intellectuals by doing so. They feel more intelligent by using a very literate vocabulary and end by writing just for themselves. Some people are lost in their intellectuality as this one is an endless source of creation. Depending on what degree some people are intellectually developed, they can attain a level where they are surmounted by all their self-questions and interrogations, self-doubts, their imagination. Some people write different genres of literature. Some write to win money, as it happens with polemical literature, and others write to be recognized by society as scientific or technical literature, fiction and so on. Others write about their personality and everything that is related to them, still, others write about sociological contexts namely about life and existence. To do all this is not only necessary to have the right education, but to have also the needed inspiration to do it as this last one is fundamental to achieve any a form of expression in society. Acting implies inspiration, as poetry, painting, music, and photography and any other form of art. Sometimes it is just necessary to dispose and concentrate in a self-oriented subject to achieve that state of creation that is naturally induced in our spirits. Inspiration arrives naturally as creation, and it cannot happen any other way. Inspiration is pure as it's natural. Inspiration is something alive in our spirits. We can only put inspiration in a drawer but not kill it. It's like putting our thoughts asleep for a while until creation will wake them up. Polemical literature can create reactions and behaviors in society. Those reactions and behaviors can become a form of culture. In fact, a book can become a guide for some people, even a Bible for others. Political literature can manipulate society by inducing ideas and values. If we consider that writing can be like speaking to somebody, we'll see that the exercise of writing is not as difficult as that. In fact, we just have to imagine that we are talking with another person or eventually to ourselves. Everybody talks to him or herself, one moment or another. By expressing our thoughts, we are sharing some identical principles, values, and states of mind. Depending on the way we try to send our message to other people, we are eventually creating art itself. There are several forms of art, and there is no precise interpretation about it. That's what makes art so special and unique. There is even a kind of art implied in our existence. The art of living is a fundamental element in our lives. Some people don't notice the art that nature expresses every single second, others photograph or paint it. Relationships also oblige us to a certain form of art as human beings cannot act as mere animals. Even the behavior of animals can be presented under that scenery of art, namely based on their pure instincts and behaviors. As a matter of fact, they have their way to relate among themselves. That's the art of life, that's the art of creation, as everything is there. I wrote some small text about art that goes like this. Hank Bukima, master of the spoken word, 
reads from the Diary of Thoughts poems, written by Carlos Pacheco. Art. The art of living and all win. The art of dying without tears, without forgetting what we were and what we will be. The art to love without demanding, without asking too much. The art to hate without showing it. The art to ignore what can affect you. The art of hiding what makes you suffer. The art to find out what makes you smile. The art, the gift of giving, sharing your knowledge, the friendship you find on yourself and on other people. The art of forgiving what can hurt. The art to achieve what we want to conquer. The art of painting, photographing, what makes you dream, what makes you live. The art of composing melodies of happiness, melodies of pain. The art to evolve to an eternal level. The art to invent what can serve and help. The art to understand what life gave birth to. The art of respecting what makes you breathe. The art to comprehend what makes you grow old. The art to accept the time to stop, to live the last drop of your existence. It's all about art. Art is everything that we put, in an artistic way, on everything that we do, think and even say. Art is present everywhere, along with our person. To find art, we have to feel it and find its related beauty. Some people can't ever find it because they are simply ugly at their interior, very deep inside of them. That's why art is present but at the same time, it's very difficult to find. The movie with Kate Winslet, Quills, is based on the true story of a great writer, Marquise de Sade, that put art on his message. It must be very sad if we cannot find the art of nature and life. It means that we are living in a very ugly world where everything is mechanical and monotonous. Mechanics can even be presented as a form of art. The meaning of identification of art is just not present in some people. Some great poets along with musicians were able to write their thoughts under the simplest language, but finding the necessary form of art to express themselves. Others use the most unique expressions to express their ideas about certain areas that were forbidden by society at the time, as it happened with Marquise de Sade while writing about sexual issues. As in other different artistic fields, those who dare the most to expose life as it is, are usually criticized, judged and condemned by society along with its rules and patterns. Later on, they will become idols as they are no longer living, and their truth can be manipulated and adulterated by the ones who condemned it in the first place. For almost 35 years that I have the same edition of the American Heritage Dictionary that covers 200,000 different definitions, 25,000 new words and so on, but still I find myself writing by my limited knowledge of English as a language. Sometimes, there is an unnecessarily complicated reasoning about writing that frequently leads to losing the exact content or message that has to be expressed. In most of the cases, the authors aren't conscious enough about that final result. Either they want to express themselves to a minority of people, or then to make their message available to every single soul that can capture their thoughts, using a very humble and simple language as a form of expression of their intellectuality. It's the same thing as to say that intellectualism can be humble and simple. I think that the purpose of having that gift is precisely that one. But at the source of all these words and thoughts, there is that essential element that makes part of it called inspiration. Without it, there is no art and no artists. It's as simple as that. Inspiration can invade us. It happens to all of us, in one way or another. It just happened right now, at this precise moment that I am writing these words to you. Sometimes we don't even know why we are acting like that. Inspiration is always there, as it makes part of the creation. We'll never be able to put creation in a drawer and opening it sometimes just to change the sceneries of our lives. If we do, she will be there for us the moment we least expect it. If we deny it, then it means that we just don't deserve it. Some people call it inspiration, others call it art, but in between, there is real art and real artists. But let's not forget that talent is submitted to several contexts as intellectuality is in a confrontation with instincts and reactions. 
there is a higher level of intellectual people who are confronted and conditioned to their past. According to each one's existence, some influences are impossible to be surmounted, and that leaves its deep scars inside some people's souls and interferes on their personal evolution. We have certain cases where parents cripple the talent of youngsters to their lack of the notion of that word and depending on their formation and education. There is a conflict between everything which is spiritual and the mechanical, and sometimes in between there is no middle term of comprehension. We'll probably find thousands of crippled talents that were submitted to this condition and lived an entire life of frustration due to that fact. Talent scares people who are limited by their visions as everything is linear at their eyes, but talent always prevails inside the talented ones as it is a living thing unavoidable to contradict and it makes part of some people's souls. Everybody is talented in a particular way. The performance of any single task in life can implicate talent, which makes a difference between doing them as a mirror machine, or put some inspiration and art on it. This attitude also depends on the meaning that we attribute to everything we do. Without a meaning everything would be empty and meaningless. Talent is a gift that some people possess. Others have it but simply ignore it, and others merely hate it as they miss it. Depending on the area of development of a talent, we can build or merely destroy, evolve or retrograde, meaning that talent can serve good and bad. Talented scientists discovered incredible things that contributed to the well-being of society while others used their talent to create machines of destruction. Writing about all these things can be a talent or simply a manifestation of our inner thoughts and ideas, and I truly think that we don't have to be talented to express our feelings and emotions, our ideas. Consider it as talking with somebody else without being afraid to show who we are. Let's all start to write people. It's all inside of us. Don't be afraid. P.S. These thoughts are dedicated to the memory of a great friend of mine, Michael Woods, master degree in philosophy and a great writer and musician, with whom I shared some moments of reflection and individual philosophies, our world of imagination. The Diary of Thoughts, End of Part 17 Written by Carlos Miguel Pacheco www.diaryofthoughts.com